Here I got some death, feigning beetles. I got some death, feigning beetles. That's right, death, feigning beetles. The other death, feigning beetles. I said death, feigning beetles. These are some death, feigning beetles. Say with me, death, feigning beetles. Everybody's death, feigning beetles. <laughs> Yeah, Death Fading Beetles, one of the coolest beetles out there. And I've been trying to get these buggers for the past three or four years. They were never available, but finally on Les Verona, I managed to snatch these two. This should be a pair. And they were relatively expensive for these beetles. I remember them back in the day when they were imported. Not imported, you could just buy them from the Spiders World. Uh, they were importing them from the US. And they were kind of readily available in the hobby. But unfortunately, since UK left the European, European Union, they stopped being available in the Europe. But it doesn't matter, they are finally here, finally once again in the Dark Den. And let me show you why they are called Death Fading Beetles. I mean, it is in the name. They will usually pretend to be dead, but oh, important thing. I need to briefly talk about this shirt, available on the webshop. The brand new Dark Den Nature Adventure shirt. They will be available for limited time. After I got all the orders, I will set them to be printed. And after that, they will no longer be available. Well, they, that actually means a limited time only. But you might be wondering what is so special about this shirt. Let me explain. As you see here, maybe you can, maybe you cannot. It says Cow Sock Expedition 2026. So the idea is, a bunch of you buy these shirts and that founds the first Dark Den nature adventure in the actual jungle. Main goal is to find Hilobrahi selected glue. That is why I chose this location, the Cow Sock National Park. But we would also look for any tarantulas, any spiders, all the creepy crawlers that can be found in the jungle. Because as you know, jungles are filled with creepy crawlers. We will be able to witness them in their natural habitat. Because naturally I will film the whole experience, the whole trip, everything. So you would get a couple of really cool unique videos. But in order for that to happen, go and buy the shirt. Link is in the description. Now that's fanning beetles. Let me show you why they are called like that. If I go and grab one, like hello, hello. Look what they do, um, girl. She doesn't want to do it now, but they will usually pretend to be dead. Although it seems that I am not threatening enough to this girl. <laughs> Let me check out with the other one. They should be a pair, male and female. So the smaller one should be male. Let me see. Can you pretend to be dead for us? Come on, what is this? Usually they position their legs so it looks like they've been dead for some time. Oh, no, there we go. Something like, oh no, come on, man. Are you alive or dead? Show us how dead you are. Are you a dead fading beetle or what? Incredible. They don't want to pretend to be dead. Well, this is annoying. Maybe a bit later. Kind of. Nope, not really. I cannot believe this. Maybe I have some old clips showing their special power. This is the only clip that I managed to find. It is not something special, but yeah, they've been trolling me all the time, I guess. By the way, look at this. You see how now male got these black, I mean, darker spots on his carapace, unlike female that is completely uh, white blue, light blue or whatever. That is because his carapace reacted to the moisture on my hands as I was handling him and that's why they got this dark coloration. And if you keep them in an enclosure that is too moist, this is how they will look. They will have these black spots, dark spots, while well, this is how they should look if they are, the humidity is proper for them. Yeah, cool that I could show this. Now we will build an enclosure for them. I already have stuff prepared here. This is the enclosure. I would actually keep them in bigger enclosure and I will probably move them later in bigger enclosure, but for now we will use this. It is standard 20 by 20 by 20 cube, available on the web shop usually. For substrate, usually it is recommended to keep them on sand, but I don't know, keeping them on plain sand just seems a bit wrong to me, so I will mix it up with some dry clay soil and my standard substrate mixture that is completely dry, no humidity inside. And of course a little bit of leaf litter, on top we will put some rock, 
uh, this branch and also cork bark uh, for hide so they can hide underneath and this rock I don't remember what this rock is and from where I got it it's probably someone sent it to me but it is a really cool looking rock you see it got a lot of character so to say and so I will first put in the sand and we'll probably get a lot of dust so I will try to be super careful with it this is actually the dark then sand for the texture also available on the web shop <laughs> shameless self-promotion <laughs> there is that now a little bit of this so we get a different feel and now the actual substrate there we go now we need to mix all of that together again i need to mix it carefully not to stir all the dust out um the rock looks really natural now the branch mm. perfect cork bark and leaf litter i will also mix it in there we go in a couple of minutes we have a finished setup ready for the beetles rehousing them is also super simple you see when you are holding them they are actually kind of pretending to be dead right they are not moving at all just holding their legs but the thing is they can they can look even less alive than this now in you go pink i gave you an amazing enclosure yeah feel free to explore it and check it out you have a lot of different features apparently distinguishing the gender distinguishing their sex is by their antennae females should have like a regular antennae without anything special while the males should got like tiny tiny hairs on them we will take micro lens and check it out if we can spot it to see if i actually got a male and a female now you will go but the guy that sold me told me that they are they can also be distinguished by their size apparently there we go now both are inside super easy to rehouse right you just grab them and put them in the new enclosure unlike tarantulas where you need to mess around with them oh and we got the exploration mode immediately which means that i should take out the macro lens before they actually go somewhere and hide yeah yeah let's do that okay now here we go thing is i need him to stop so i can actually observe his antennae yeah, it is kind of hard to tell here let's see the female apparent female don't really see any special features to be honest let me just i need him to stop can you play dead come on you are really bad at being that feigning beetle okay i think that i can see something or maybe not it is hard to tell on this small display take the other one same way uh, i don't know i have no idea you tell me go go oh and look how her back is immediately dark <laughs> And they are actually hanging together, trying to get away from me. <laughs> now let me give you some information about their care. What they eat and how you need to keep them. Apparently, you can see the setup. Completely dry, you don't really need to give them any moisture in the substrate. It is only needed if you want to breed them, but I think in Europe nobody managed to breed them. So you don't really need to worry about that. Just keep them dry like this on room temperature. Hotter, colder, from what I read, it doesn't really matter because... From where they are from, uh, days are really hot, nights are really cold. So they are used to wide temperature range. They, they live for really long, some say for more than 10 years. But the problem is since all of them are captive bred, uh, no, not captive bred, since all of them are wild caught, you don't know how old is the beetle that you get. Maybe it is a young beetle, so you will have it for next 10 years. Or maybe it is an old one that will die within half a year you never know but they are long lived and if you get more of them you will probably have them for a long time they're also communal you can keep a bunch of them have a huge communal setup with them but at least in europe they are really really expensive so that is not a realistic thing i paid for these two 80 euros so one was 40 while back in the day i remember them being less than 20 euros so that is a bit inconvenient for food they need a lot of proteins their diet consists of in nature their diet consists of dead and dried insects so you can feed them with fish food you know in flakes pellets also apparently dry cat food but i will also try to feed them with actual dead insects and they love to munch on vegetable like carrots uh, cucumbers and stuff like that that also provides them moisture i would say so overall they are super easy to care and I don't know why they are now camping over there in that corner on top. 
I assume it is only because they don't want me to get a nice footage on them crawling around the perimeter. Yeah, that must be it. Uh, they cannot crawl the glass, so you can keep them in an open container if you really want to, in like plastic tub or something like that. And apparently they do really well with other desert beetles. And what I... I don't know if that's the truth, but you can... Apparently you can keep them together with des hairy desert scorpion. Uh, Hadrurus arizonensis, because they also live in the same habitat. So apparently you can keep them together and they will actually feed on food leftovers from the scorpion. So I would, if that is the truth, I would like to have a setup like that. So once I, I'm ready to move them into a bigger enclosure, I will also get the scorpion and make like a communal setup. Anyway, I will let them settle now and then we will feed them. So yeah, a little bit of time to jump and it is new day. This one still got the marking on the back, the dark spot you see, which means that Either that it takes a bit longer for them to lose that after being exposed to humidity or maybe the humidity in the enclosure is a bit too high. I mean, maybe the substrate got a bit, a tiny amount of humidity that still needs to go out. So that's why I removed the top and let it vent. So hopefully that will change in a day or so. But I'm wondering where is the other beetle? Now this one is also in the hiding now. And also I spotted, look at this. Someone was digging over there because all of that was covered with leaf litter and also the, the actual substrate, not the sand. And now uh, the sand is more exposed. So yeah, interesting. I wonder what was that about. Unfortunately, I didn't put camera to record a time lapse to see what were they doing. I didn't really expect that some digging will be going on. Uh, let me just see if the, the other beetle is under the cork bark. No, so it is also probably behind... Or what, what? Ah, never mind. I thought that there is a hole, but this is just an empty space behind the rock. And yeah, there is the second beetle hiding a little bit. So how to feed them now? You see, I just want to give them these fish flakes. I will put them on the cork bark and then I will try to take one beetle and put it in front of that and we will see if it will start to eat. Although I'm not sure, you know, when you disturb some animal, usually they refuse to eat because of the disturbance. So I'm, I'm not sure if that will be the case here. So a little bit of this, couple of flakes. Oop! I said couple of flakes. This is way too much. I'm not sure how much they eat, but this is definitely too much. But okay, they should eat it eventually. I don't want to remove the rock, so I will use the tweezers, but oof, I cannot do it with these straight tweezers. This curved one should help because with them I should be able to just go like yoink. Yo, I I dropped it. Okay, just a little bit. There we go. <laughs> I'm not sure if I recorded it correctly, but let's see if we can get a feeding clip. She's wiggling with her feelers, and oh, there we go. The munching begins. Let me see that up close. Look at those teeth. It seems like if they want to bite you, they definitely could use those mandibles to nibble on your hand. Interesting. And she's definitely enjoying those flakes, you see. Let's wait and see how much she will actually eat. I will put the camera on a tripod. There, now let's observe. Okay, this lasted for a bit longer than I expected. She was munching on the flakes for a good 30 minutes, so I'm surprised about that. But now it seems that she is done. She's just chilling over there. And you see there are still leftovers for the other, be other beetle. I'm so happy that once again I have these beetles in the dark den and hopefully they will live for many, many years. We all do hope that, right? Anyway, don't forget to go check out the shirts and buy some so I can send them to printing before the Christmas rush begins you know I cannot believe that it is almost November and we are getting close to Christmas crazy how time flies anyway I hope that you enjoyed this video if you did thumbs it up and comment something if you want to support this channel more there's a Patreon page and the webshop page with merch and stuff and shirts. Uh, if you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe up every Monday and sometimes live stream on Sundays. So see you again really, 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 really soon. Bye! <laughs>